Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Friends, happy Easter. This is the last in this short series of uh, reflections for this most strange of Holy Week and uh, Eastertide. Last uh, December, one evening, I took my two-year-old granddaughter Grace for a little walk around the block to see some Christmas lights. As we turned back into Bishop's Croft, it was pitch black, so dark that we couldn't even make out the driveway from the bushes and the trees. Understandably, this frightened little Grace, who clung tight to my leg and said, I'm a bit scared. So I scooped her up into my arms and said, well, I'm not scared, so that's okay. And I felt her relax again. It was a beautiful grandpa moment. What a very strange Holy Week this has been. Personally, I grew up in a vicarage household, and I think this could be the first Easter day of my life when I haven't been to church to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. One of the best things about Easter Day for me is the chance to share it face to face with those who celebrate with me, and today I can't. So Easter has a pretty bleak backdrop for us all this year. We have been cooped up in our homes for almost three weeks and where space is tight or there are tensions in the house, that's bound to be difficult. For many of us, there has been a great deal of anxiety around and even fear. There's fear specifically about the virus, fear that we ourselves might catch it or that our loved ones might. We're justifiably afraid for family members working in the NHS or in other frontline roles for those who staff our care homes and our supermarkets. We're justifiably afraid for friends and neighbours who are elderly or frail or vulnerable because of underlying health conditions. Fear is not unreasonable in these circumstances and it's not necessarily a failure in Christian discipleship either. And it's not just the virus itself which gives us cause for concern at the moment. It's the uncertainty about the duration of the restrictions under which we are living at the moment. Uncertainty about the full impact of them. Almost no business will go unscathed. Many households will experience a drop in income. Jobs will be lost and debts will mount. Charities, private companies, churches, all will experience a severe financial squeeze. And we naturally worry about the implications of that. And I've said nothing about Brexit or about the challenge of climate change and the very real anxieties many of us still have about those things. These other issues have not gone away, even if we're not talking about them very much at the moment. So it is striking that Matthew's account of the first Easter day gives us as almost its dominant message these words, do not be afraid. The phrase comes not just once, but twice. It is spoken to the women at the tomb, first by the angel of the Lord, and then again by the risen Lord Jesus himself. Do not be afraid. As a matter of fact, whenever those words appear in the Bible, and they appear very, very often, it's actually an acknowledgement that there is good reason to fear. In our passage, for example, Matthew says that as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary made their way to the tomb, suddenly there was a great earthquake. Well, that would set my pulse racing without a doubt. Then Matthew goes on to tell us that the angel of the Lord rolled away the rock from the tomb and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. As for the soldiers, they shook for fear and became like dead men. So Matthew is clear, the women are right to be frightened. It would be odd if in the face of an earthquake and a lightning bright angel they remain serene. So do not be afraid is not a rebuke, it's a reassurance. It means something like, I understand your alarm, but actually you are safe. It is okay. You don't need to remain frightened. I do sympathise with these women as if experiencing an earthquake and encountering an angel were not shock enough. They then have to get their heads around his words to them. He tells them he knows that they are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He tells them Jesus is no longer in the tomb because he has been raised. He invites them to look inside of the tomb where the dead Jesus had lain. 
and he instructs them to go quickly to the disciples to tell them that Jesus has been raised from the dead and is going ahead of them to Galilee and will meet them there. So if shock one is the earthquake and the dazzling angel, then shock two is the news that Jesus has been raised from the dead. It's not hard for us to relate to it when Matthew says that as the women ran off, it was in fear and great joy. Great joy, yes, but still in fear. But then comes shock three. They almost literally run into Jesus. Suddenly, Matthew says, and it's the second time he's used that word, suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. I imagine that as the women fell to the ground and took hold of Jesus' feet, it was in something close to panic. No wonder he too says to them, do not be afraid. Again, those words are not a rebuke, but a reassurance. The risen Lord is not saying to them, your fear is groundless. Pull yourselves together. Your reaction is inappropriate. On the lips of Jesus, as on the lips of the angel, do not be afraid means something like, I understand your alarm, but actually you are safe. It is okay. You don't need to remain frightened. Perhaps today, more than ever, we too need to hear that reassuring word of the Lord. You see, when God raised Jesus from the dead, it was a once-for-all declaration to the world that we do not need to be afraid anymore. In raising Jesus from the dead, God has conquered sin and death and the powers of evil once and for all. Of course, that does not mean that nothing has the capacity to terrify us any longer, but it does mean that our fears need not be final. Instead, when we are afraid, when we are overwhelmed by our present circumstances, when we look at our suffering world and we find good reason to be anxious, then God says to us, I understand your alarm, but actually you are safe. It is okay. Look at Jesus raised from the dead. You do not need to remain frightened. Do you remember the great hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer? The final verse begins like this. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction land me safe on Canaan's side. To tread the verge of Jordan to feel our mortality, to walk in the valley of the shadow of death, can be a fearful thing. Anxiety in the face of an uncertain future is not inappropriate. But there is one who is able to bid our anxious fears to subside, because he is the death of death, the God who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead. It's as if, when we cling on to him, and confess, I'm a bit scared. He scoops us up into his everlasting arms and says, but I'm not scared, so it's okay. So today, even in the face of all that alarms us or grieves us or fills us with fear, may the living God, through the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, give us the assurance of his peace and the gift of Easter joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin, and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be praise and honour, glory and might now and in all eternity. Amen.